Martin. Well, what they're talking about, Frank, is that he's got too much side tire, and uh, you've got to have a certain amount of distance from the trademark of the bat and the side tire. And Nettles is leaving the field as if the game is over. Oh, he's just coming in. I'm not sure. Uh, they might have a legitimate uh, gripe. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And he's steaming back. He is out. And having to be forcibly restrained from hitting plate umpire Tim McClellan. And welcome back to another episode of Too Much Pod Tower after we took a week off last week and this week we're back for with another episode and i'm your host as always alex keeler and today i have with me uh johnny black the scorecard creator and he can be on he found on twitter at jball0202 and john, john soupy superwitz and he can be found on twitter i'm that soupy 85 so what's going on guys I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's, uh-huh. it's nice to be back here after a nice little uh, vacate, a little holiday week. But it's good to be yeah. back talking baseball. We are about, we are now getting into the thick of summer. The All Star ballots are out, so we can start voting for that. And I actually like the new. Uh, I I just figured out what the new uh, voting thing is, and I and I I'm, I like it. I think it's a it's a good alternative for now. So, but yeah, we're in the thick of baseball now. Yeah, this is a this is a good time now. We're a third of the way through the season, get, getting to getting to see what teams are real and what teams aren't. Mm-hmm. You know, getting get get a feel of different players. I like it. This is the yeah. time. This is this is summertime now. It's after you know after Memorial Day, after the week we took off and everything. So mm-hmm. this is good. Well, more than a quarter away into the season now. And, you know, a lot of us talked about what, t- you know, some of the teams that had hot starts and we were like, eh, that might not last. It might, we don't know. A lot of the teams with hot starts have now kind of progressed or degressed back into kind of what we thought they were. I guess the Mariners would be one. Mariners obviously just traded Jay Bruce to the Phillies. So, and there are rumors that they are about to just fire sale that team. So yeah. Yeah. everyone had everyone had a little speculation about Seattle. Oh man, they're they're hot. They're playing really well now. You know, can they can they take that West? And yeah, that 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 ended pretty that ended pretty quick. That was about a two three year or two three week uh, little fun thing to talk about. Yeah, they started off thirteen and two. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know it was like. Start off with the world, kind of like the Mets did last year. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Mets started off last year like ten and one, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know. But one of the teams that I have to mention, of course, because it's my team, is the Minnesota Twins. You know, best record in baseball. Yep. You know, so, and I honestly, at this point, like I said, once you get past Memorial Day, I, I think the Twins are the real deal. They're gonna win that division. I, you know, yeah, I agree with you. I, th- I wasn't I think the only that, one that said it in the beginning of the year, but with the injuries to Clevenger and to Kluber, you know, Cleveland, the only thing Cleveland Indians had was their starting rotation. And it was mm-hmm. the best thing on paper going into the year. It was the best starting rotation in the major leagues. Yes. Cle- Kluber, Bauer, Clevenger, Bieber, Carrasco. I mean, that that's one through five. That's That was the best in the major leagues. Mm-hmm. But – Clevenger and Kluber hurt. Bauer not pitching like he should. And their hitting is, you know, the only time they win games is it's two to nothing, three to one, mm-hmm. because they can't score runs. Yeah. They have no one in that lineup. They missed Lindor for the first month of the season. Now he came back and he's doing Lindor things like he should. But Jose Ramirez hasn't been the Jose Ramirez of the past two years. Carlos Santana's been solid and Lindor has been solid since he's been back. But other than that, I mean, they have nothing. They have nothing in that lineup. And they're already 11 games behind the Twins. Yeah. I, I just don't see them catching. I mean, yes, the Twins starting rotation worries me a little bit because I think Odorisi and Perez 
have been pitching a little over their heads at this point. And I think they're going to take a step back. But Gibson's been solid. Barrios is an ace in the making. He just progresses every year. Uh, their bullpen is young. They have enough arms there. Taylor Rogers and Trevor May and those guys, Hildenberger, they, they're good there. I think this starting rotation, they could really use, honestly, they could really use someone like Keiko. Mm-hmm. And I would hope that looking at the team now with the lead they have, knowing that they will most likely win the division, someone like Keiko should, they should open the pocketbooks a little bit. The Pollards could open the pocketbooks for once in their lives, you know, for the twin and then and, and sign Keiko. You know, because you bring not only with Keiko, not not only does his pitch set and the way he pitches is a fly ball pitcher, pitches away to righties and stuff like that. Not only does it fit target field and he would pitch well there, but he brings a Cy Young Award. He brings a World Series championship to a young team that's trying to make that next take that next step. You know, the Twins had a fluke season two years ago where they made it to the wild card and they got beat by the Yankees, like they always do in the playoffs <laughs> for the past 20 I years. I love it when you say but, that. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, this year this year could be different because Keiko, let me tell you something, Keiko owns the Yankees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this would be a perfect fit for the Twins to go spend some money, bring on Keiko, Get that veteran presence in there, that lefty too, to go with Perez. So you got righty, lefty, righty, lefty. And I mean, with Barrios, Gibson, Perez, Odorisi, I, I, that's a solid rotation for the rest of the year. And they can lock up this division easily and rest the young bullpen they have in September. Absolutely. The hitting's not going anywhere. The hitting's not going anywhere. Uh-huh. The hitting's going to be there because their hitting is all in their prime. 25, 26, 27, 28 years old. All these guys, Polanco, Kepler, Rosario, Buxton, they're all hitting their prime right now. Mm-hmm. The hitting isn't going anywhere. The pitching is the only thing. The starting pitching is the only thing that scares me about the team. And, the, and that's the thing, too. I think that's one of the things that does help them is that they are a so, an overall solid team. I said, I, you know, I said a few weeks ago, I said, Houston is the only overall solid team that can get you on offense, defense, pitching, anything. I think now that tw- the Twins can actually be in that conversation because you you are getting that hitting. You are getting Polanco. You're getting Crone. You're getting Kepler, who had an amazing week last week. And then, again, same thing. I mean, yes, Odorizzi is playing beyond his means, and we'll see if he does take a step down. But, again – this ev- the the team is playing great overall, and it does help a little bit that that division is not good, and I think that's why they could. Yeah. Uh, they it, but the problem is too, they're a young team. They can't afford to put the the pump the brakes at all on this season. They can't go into cruise control. They have to just pull push forward the entire season because it's not a veteran squad where. Take get guys could get take uh, take days off and relax and and like that. A young team can't do that as much because they don't right. have the experience for that. So that's mm-hmm. the one thing mm-hmm. I'm a little ner- I would be a little nervous about is if they do get too much of a lead, they get into cruise control a little bit and they lose that competitive edge. That could be bad. I I don't think they would lose the lead at all. But that could be bad if they do get into a a series with a Houston that has that has a playoff experience, the Red Sox that have playoff experience, the Yankees that have playoff experience. That could end very bad for a, a young team like Minnesota. So I'm just hoping that they keep pushing the way they are right now and don't let up until – until you know November first or whenever the, the uh, they play their last game. Yeah, I don't think Baldelli will let them do that. It was the way Baldelli played and the way he is, like mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to let that happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying, and that's that's another reason why I think Keiko would be a key a key pickup for the Twins. Yeah. And because you're talking about the Keiko. I mean, Keiko pitches well against the Yankees. Mm-hmm. And then if you have, if you make, you know, if the Twins make the playoffs, 
you got Keiko possibly pitching against his old team, the Astros. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah. You know, Odorisi and Perez are both on one year deals. Yeah. This is it. Like, they're, they're getting their free agent deals next year. Perez is on a one year deal. Odorisi is on the last year of control. So they're pitching, they're pitching for their, their big contract. Yeah. Next year. So I don't see them falling off too much, but I, I still think they're pitching over their heads a little bit. Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah. I, it, so. it, yeah, that, I absolutely believe that. But again, they can afford it a little bit again because of the division. Again, yeah. they're again a young team. I think they're going to have slides come mid July, August. There's going to be slides. There's they're they're probably going to lose five of six games at some point. It's going to happen. It happens to every single team. Sure, but they can afford course. that because I think they're they right now they do have an outstanding lead. And I and again with the way the Indians are right now, who knows when, who knows if they ever eventually will get better. They might just completely blow up that team and just call it a day. They might. So, they might well, someone up the pitching. Just, you know, again, we ha- we might have had a little insight with uh, Alex's interview with uh, Rachel Luba, who kind of suggested mm-hmm. that they should trade uh, Trevor Bauer. And if you haven't listened to that interview, it's an, it's an episode here on Too Much Pod Tar. So, yeah, it was- I was just about to mention that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but again, I think, uh, I absolutely think that the Twins are going to win that division. But like mm-hmm. I said, again, they have to keep pushing. They're a young team. They can't afford to pump the brakes or go into cruise control. They got to keep pushing. They're going to have slides, yeah. but they just have to keep pushing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. That point. Definitely, yeah. I just... You know, going back on the Keiko thing, um, the only question would be if, like, whoever signs him, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be able to have, have be full strength. So he's going to have, it's going to take him a little while to get, you know, into season mode. So mm-hmm. that's really the only question is like, how long it's going to take? Like, is it going to take a month to get into season mode? Or are you going to take two weeks or whatever? Like, well, suppo- supposedly he's ready to roll. I mean, he's been pitching simulated games. Yeah. Like a hundred pitches and stuff. So I mean, yeah. he's yeah, he is, I, he's I, pitching. That, that's going to be games. up to the team to evaluate. But mm-hmm. but again, that's not that's not in game. You don't you know it's not the same adrenaline as in game. So you know he might have that adrenaline rush might help him. He might have one or two good starts to start to begin this begin his season, and then I think he maybe he'll have like a two or three game slide. But I think like again that rest is going to help come September, October, yeah. when, yeah. you know, he doesn't have 50 or – he has 50 or something less innings than he would if he started, you know, uh, in spring training. So I think that that might help to where he could – you know, if he's going strong in October and he's pitching a, 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 a clincher or, or uh, you know, or maybe they're, you know, an elimination game, he could go seven, eight. And pitch, and if yeah. he's pitching mm-hmm. strong because he gets, he has those, he has less innings in him this season. He has more rest, so that could help in October. I think you know, I think he he's going to have a slide. He'll have, a, I think he's going to have a few bad starts. Just again, because he just you know, it's not there yet for him. Kind of like how Sale was the first couple of uh, starts for him. I think yeah. it'll be a little more for Keuchel. So, but I think, I think it beneficially comes late September, October. That's, that's going to help them, uh, whoever team he's on a lot. And then we were talking about the uh, division leads and all that stuff, like the twins leading the division. And you guys both thought that they were going to run away with it. Then we go with our first topic here too, is with, you know, talking about the Yankees and Red Sox series that just ended the other day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Yankees have a, a lead in the division right now over the Rays, and then the Red Sox are, you know, right now they're eight and a half, eight and a half games back of the Yankees, and you know it just seems like it doesn't seem like the Red Sox will be able to catch them at any point this season. This, the Yankees have dominated; they've only lost, the only game they lost so far against them this season was, you know, on Sunday when mm-hmm. when they lost when they lost that game. So 
you know, I just what do you guys thoughts on the ser- on that whole series and then you know and on the whole season series so far too. And, and we can also look forward to you know the London series that's coming up at the end of the month. Yeah. What what I so I mentioned this on the Score Crow message board. I think it was yesterday. I said if the Red Sox lose this game, the lose the Sunday night game. I'm going to write an article about how they just need to sell. It's over. It's done. And a, a lot of people even said, well, they're only a game out of the wild card. And yesterday's win kind of helped out. I'm very happy, actually. I can't believe I'm a Yankee fan saying this. I'm kind of happy they won a little bit yesterday because it helped me put a little bit more perspective into their season. I don't necessarily – and actually, I think last night's win was not a Red Sox win. It was a Yankee loss. It, yeah. Not to not to put it all on Clint Frazier, but well, it was a horrible. lot of a lot yeah, of people yeah. have kind of put his fielding, uh, his uh, below average fielding in perspective before this. But it just was on blast last night, and especially because it was on national TV. It makes it yeah. even worse. And what makes it even worse is he didn't even stay for to take any questions from the press. That yeah, made it a hundred yeah. times mm-hmm. worse. Oh. And in a veteran clubhouse, he's going to get talked to about that. But it, 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 it let me put in perspective about the Red Sox season. They're not out of it. They're only a game out of the uh, out of the second wild card. I think the Yankees or the Rays are probably going to take that first wild card. At the, I think that's just going to be a battle between those two. But you know, mm-hmm. it's it's there's a group of teams that not necessarily are better than each other. The Red Sox are in limbo because they're, they're hitting is starting to pick up. J.D. Martinez is starting to play better. Mookie Betts is starting to play better. Those guys are starting to pick up. But that pitching, specifically that bullpen, the bullpen could have easily gave up that, gave up that lead last night. And it looked like they almost did. Again, same thing. Yankees made crucial mistakes last night. Crucial mistakes. Mm. And... They need that. I think right now, I really, 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 really hope the Red Sox, Dubrowski is on. He, I hope at mid at 12 01, he called Craig Kimbrell and said, Yo, get your ass over to Yaki Way right now. I don't care what I got to pay you because that mm-hmm. bullpen is terrible. It's awful. It's. It, there is nobody in that bullpen you can depend on. And what is the most important thing, especially come late in the season, is your bullpen. Your starting arms are tired. Your bats are – your everyday bats are tired. It's that bullpen. That bullpen that you're going to need sometimes five, six innings in October. You're going to need those. And they got – and they won – the World Series last year with the skin of their teeth, especially with Craig Kimball. Craig Kimball mm-hmm. so many times, when it, whether it was the Gary Sanchez uh, hit that was five feet from sending it to game five or that, um, or that Bregman liner that, was ba- that almost hit the ground. They need the bullpen. They ha- the, I, if they don't get a bullpen, if they do not address that need – during the trade deadline, they are not even going to sniff the playoffs at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other thing with the wild card, right now the the leader in the second wild card is the Rangers. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be there at the end of the season. So, I just – I mean, the Red Sox are only came back with them. Then, you know, it's just – there's a lot of teams in there that are bunched together. So, it's, it's probably going to end up being like – I think the Red Sox have the best shot of getting that second wild card. And like you said, I, I think it's going to be Yankees or Rays that may get the first wild card. I just don't – I don't think the, Rays, the Red Sox are going to be able, be able to, you know, stay at that level. And, and, this, like, as, yeah. and, and I know, like, everybody wants to say, well, you know, the Red Sox have the talent. I, I still don't think that they're above Texas – or Oakland, or or any other team, or Lo, or a Los Angeles, or any other team. I, I I honestly like looking out to it. I think Oakland, to me, has the best shot of possibly mm-hmm. catching that second wild card. 
unless, again, Boston addresses the bullpen. But the, another problem is, too, and it'll all depend on what everybody wants to do, there's going to be a lot of buyers come the trade deadline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So many more. There's Everybody's going to buy. Um, I would say Seattle, San Francisco, and and Miami, Cincinnati, probably are the only teams that we know are going to be sellers. Maybe Arizona, maybe Colorado. It all depends. Colorado's actually won some games recently. They're still way out of the out, uh, Everybody's way out in the West. We'll see how far they creep in when it comes to the wild card. But I, I believe there's going to be a lot of people trying to pick up pieces. And it's, you know, I and, and, and maybe can the Red Sox go, hey, we'll give you a bat if you give us a, if you give us an arm. Problem is, too, with the problem is, too, with the Red Sox, their farm system is terrible. They don't have Mm -hmm. prospects. So they can't get, they, they, they could get somebody mid level. They can get mid level relievers, but they're not, they can't get anybody shut down because no one's going to want any of those prospects that they have uh, in the farm system. I've watched them. Trust me. I've seen the Portland Sea Dogs play a couple times. They're not Mm -hmm. good. They are not good at all. So, Again, right now, I think the, the East is the Rays, the Yankees. The loser of that division gets that one wild card. And mm. the Red Sox, to me, right now, have the best chance. They have all the other pieces in place. It's just can they get that bullpen to kind of just put themselves slightly above everybody else? I think the Red Sox take that last wild card. I don't see I don't see Texas doing anything. Honestly, Texas is, Texas pitching staff is horrible. Mike Miner is playing out of his mind right now. I mean, and that's just carrying them. I mean, they have Odor, they have Mazzara, they have Chu, they have Gallo, who's hitting actually like two eighty now right now, which is incredible. But he's on the IL now. Yeah, he just got so. I, I don't. I don't see Texas doing anything. I don't see any team. Honestly, it's it's the have and it's the haves and haves nots in the American League, and the National League is the complete opposite. The National League is basically, with the exception of the Giants, the Reds, and Miami, every team is in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> basically, oh yeah. In the mm-hmm. American League, it's the exact opposite. It's the Yankees, the Astros, the Twins, and the Rays, and the Red Sox. Who's going to beat those five teams? I don't think anyone. And I I understand what you were saying about Oakland. I just think they had a magical season last year, and I honestly don't see them doing the same thing this year. I love Matt Chapman. I love Matt Olson. I like Ramon Laureano. I like Semyon. I like all these guys. They do not have the pitching. And they're not going to win 97 games again this year. I know they've been on a streak. They went on a little hot streak, and they they did their thing. They won nine in a row or ten in a row or whatever it was. Uh, I'm, I, I just uh, – Oakland doesn't convince me this year. I think it's going to be the Yankees, Twins, Astros as the, as the division winners, and I think the Red Sox and Rays both make the wild card, and they're going to play each other. Because I, I just don't see any other team in the American League coming close to the Red Sox that they raise. Uh, the Red Sox still have talent. Yeah, They still have one of the most talented teams in the American League. They won 108 games last year for a reason. Yes. Did they get a little luck along the way? Did they get? Yes, they did, of course. To win 108 games, to win two-thirds of the season, yes, you get a little luck. But it doesn't mean they drop off by 20 games this year. They still have the same team they did last year, and they're not going to sell at all. They're all in. They forfeited their first-round draft pick this year, dropping down 10 spots into the second round because they spent money. They are not going to sell off at all. They are all in to win the championship. There's no way they're selling off. And they got nothing to sell off. Like you said, the, the farm system, 
the farm system stinks. Everyone who they had who is young and coming up is up already. Devers, Chavis, you know, all these guys like, you know, those are the young kids that they had. You know, they traded a bunch of them already. They traded Moncada. They traded Kopech. They traded these guys. So they have nothing left to do to, except to try to win one more championship before it all comes down. Yeah, and the, my, going back to, like, our first episode, my predictions for the division was actually uh, the Yankees, Rays, and Red Sox for that AL East. So that's it's looking like that's what it's going to turn into for – and then I had them as the wild cards to the uh, Red Sox and Rays. So, yeah, it's looking li- it's looking lot really likely right now. Unless the Red Sox can somehow end up, you know, turning it around a, b- a bit more and you know playing like th- playing more as, more like the team that they were last year. But they definitely have the talent, as you said. But there's I just don't see if unless they, you know, improve that bullpen. So I, I just don't I don't really see it. Yeah, the bullpen. I, I I don't think the bullpen's. I think it'll be okay. It's not going to be what it was last year, obviously, because they don't have Kimbrel, they don't have Kelly, and that was those are two big pieces last year. But I don't think with Barnes and Brazier the back end. I think they're okay. I think they can maintain, and uh, with their hitting, they they have enough. Where they can at least compete in a division. Are they as good as the Yankees when the Yankees are healthy? No. That's why I picked the Yankees too to win a division. But but they're still gonna be there. They're still there. Like you said, like you said, Soupy. Like they're a game out of a wild card. I mean, <laughs> with as bad as they've played and as bad as sale was in the beginning of the season and everything like that. You know, if they get sale price of Porcello going and Eddie Rodriguez, I mean, they have a solid staff. You know, and their hitting is the lineup is solid. So I, I don't know. I, I still see the Red Sox making a wild card. Mm-hmm. I see the Yankees winning the division. Red Sox raise wild cards. You know, because I think they can beat out the Cleveland and the Angels and Rangers or whoever else in one of the other divisions. The, the other divisions are garbage. Mm-hmm. Honestly, they're just garbage. I mean, I, I honestly think the Indians are going to be sellers. Yeah, that's what I think. When it comes down to it. I, I mean, when it comes down to it, at the end of the month, if the Indians are 13, 14 games out of the, of the playoff race, even if they're six, seven games out of the wild card, just sell it. Just dump. I mean, we, they don't spend money anyway. They're a mid-market team. You might as well sell now and get what you can for a Kluber and a Bauer. Keep Clevenger and Bieber. You have Carrasco. You know, you still got a solid top three for the next couple of years. So sell Kluber and Bauer. Get you some bats to go with Lindor and Santana and Jose Ramirez. And maybe it won't be a total rebuild. You know, Seattle already said they're fire. It's a fire mm-hmm. sale. Yeah. So they're done. They already traded with Jay Bruce. They're all ready to, they're ready to go. But who knows with Jerry DePoto over there, you know, he, he, li- he just likes to trade. I don't. I don't know what he. He's got like. He was just likes to trade guys. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what it is with him. Yeah. So we talked about a lot about the. You know, we talked about the Yankees, Red Sox, and the AL East. We also talked about AL Central. But then another, you know, the, the, the NL West. Obviously, the Dodgers have a big lead too. And you know, just you think. You think the Dodgers are going to be able to maintain that lead? That division, or do you think that you know Colorado or San Diego, it's, uh, one of them, who's going to be able to catch them, or do you think they're just going to keep that lead the whole season? Well, I was just going to say, I think, yeah, I think this Dodgers are just going to run away with that division. I believe. Well, I just think their talent level is just too far up there. That's it. Like the Padres, I think they have the like I've said in other episodes, I think the Padres have a chance that 
you know, one of the maybe one of the wild card spots, but they're I don't they're not gonna they're not at the level yet that they're gonna, you know, compete for that division yet. You know, I think next year is their year maybe to to have a chance at that division. You know, like but this year is just, you know, kind of a you know, the kind of their up up and coming year kind of like be starting to be in the in, in like in the uh, playoff race, but not maybe not make it, but come maybe come close. But that, yeah, with the Dodgers, definitely, you know, with their solid rotation, their you know Bell, the Bellinger playing at such a high level, right? Like he has all season. Yeah, just they've they just I just don't see them falling off at all, and you know, Diamondbacks are aren't really gonna go anywhere either they don't they don't look too good so like well they've they've hung in there a little bit but i just they're definitely gonna start falling off a little bit more now so i think that the dodgers are definitely run away with that division yeah i would agree with that i don't see the rockies catching them yeah not- i don't see arizona arizona's arizona's in a rebuild mode anyway i mean they get rid of goldschmidt last year they get rid of pollock corbin I mean, there's no way they are gonna compete. Um, San Diego's a year or two away. Mm-hmm. They're young kids. They may be playing decent right now, but the grind of this major league season is once you hit August and September, they're gonna fall off. You know, we see it all the time. We yeah. see we saw it two years ago with Milwaukee. You know, they had a lot of young guys. They fell off at the end of the year, and then last year they came up. We saw it with Philly last year, and what are we seeing this year? Philly's leading the division. Yeah. You know, it takes a year to get these young guys. They, they have to maintain. You know, and two years ago in Milwaukee, the young guys fell up. They, they fell apart in August and September. They kind of fell off. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Philly last year. The young guys, Hoskins and guys like that, they fell off. They were playing out of position. They, You know, it was a learning curve. I think San Diego's going to go through the same thing this year. Yeah. San Diego's got a lot of talent. And they have a lot of talent coming. I mean, Denelson Lamette is coming off his Tommy John surgery. So he'll be back this year. But he'll be pitching just coming back from Tommy John. So, I mean, he'll be back at full strength next year. Yeah. You know, McKenna Gore, you know, the, the young kid they drafted. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Arizona's just – Arizona's in rebuild mode. They have four picks th- tonight in the draft, you know, so what they can do to build their team, they're a couple of years away. Colorado can make some noise, mm-hmm. but it just seems like they just never get, it's just never like there. No, I don't know. Los Angeles is the class of the division. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, they've won the division six years in a row. It's, it's not going to change. It's not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. Uh-huh. The only thing is if they can get over that hump of, you know, they've lost two straight World Series. So I'm, well, I'm, I'm kind of rooting for them to, you know, get over the hump and actually win one for a change. I'd love to see them win one unless they play the Twins. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, uh, that's just, fine with me. I think they can win yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, last year it was, it was tough to watch them lose, especially since it was the Red Sox. But I hated seeing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think I, I think actually my my World Series pick from before the season was actually uh, Yankees and Dodgers, so that could, that's a that's definitely a potential right now. So yeah, could be. I mean, it's a rematch of seventy seven, seventy eight, and eighty one. Yeah, I forget uh, who I picked. I picked the Nationals like an idiot again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <You know. laughs> I think I picked the Nationals and Astros. If I'm not mistaken. I think it was the Nationals and Astros. Yeah, I think that's what it was. That, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds right. Well, the NL Central and the NL East is interesting. Oh, yeah. Just because, you know, I mean, I think they have a lot of teams that are going to be fighting for spots. You know, the Cubs are, the Cubs are looking like they're running away, kind of with the central, but I don't put anything past Milwaukee or St. Louis. I mean, I picked St. Louis to win the division actually. 
Yeah. And I think St. Louis has a pretty complete team. They're very balanced. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, that's going to be a dogfight, I think. I mean, Pittsburgh is not that good. Mm-hmm. And Cincinnati is just not good. You know. No. But I think the other three teams in that division. And in the, in the National League East, I mean, honestly, it's still – the Mets and Nationals are still in it. Like, it's not that far apart where they can't go on a run. So, I mean, it's, that's still a four-team division. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like Phillies really run away, away with everything. So, I don't know. National League is tough to, to pick. But if I had to pick it right now, I'd say there's Dodgers definitely in the NL West. Mm-hmm. I'd probably say – I'd probably still stick with the Cardinals in the Central. And I'm going to stick with the Nationals in the East. Mm-hmm. And – I think what I picked in the beginning of the season was both wild cards coming out of the East. Yeah. And I think I picked Philly and the Mets coming out of the East. So I'm going to stick with what I, I'm going to stick with what I said for now. <laughs> you know, it, it always go, it always changes a little bit, but I think I'm going to stick with it. Because yeah. they, there's a lot that can change. We still got over 100 games left to play. A lot of moves to be made, trade deadline. You know, and what's funny is I, I keep seeing on like Yankees Twitter all, all these trades, trade proposals, and things talking about Scherzer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why would you even mention that? Because Washington is not trading. And, no. and I see people on Twitter. Talking about well, the Nationals should trade Scherzer because they're out of it and everything. I'm like, are you really? Like, are you kidding? He's got two more years of control. They're into him for millions of dollars. Like, what? Why? why? Like, what do you think? And I'm I'm seeing people trading like, oh yeah, we'll trade him Clint Frazier and. Um, I'm like, what, are, you, are you kidding me? Yeah. You're talking about the best pitcher in baseball, basically. And you, well, I think the, with two years of control, and you're going to trade with Clint Frazier? I think the one <laughs> with trade, a bunch of other guys. I think the one Come trade on. proposal. The one trade proposal was actually some like um, the one guy at MLB Network. I forget. Uh, shit, I don't remember his name, but he his like his one proposal was like Scherzer for I think it was Frazier, Bird, uh, and Duhar, and somebody else. It's like one yeah. of the Andujar is out for the season. Frazier's, you know, he's up and down. He's Bobby. his defense is shaky. He's as bad as okay. He and you know, Bird is injured, and when he does play, he's not even that good. So it's like, who, why would the Nationals yeah. take that trade? <laughs> I said to I said to one guy on Twitter, I said, if if the Nationals would ever entertain an offer from the Yankees for Scherzer, it starts with either Torres or Sanchez. Mm-hmm. That's where you start, and then the package goes from there. Because if you're not, if I'm the Nationals, and I'm trading Max Scherzer, who is arguably the best pitcher in the major leagues, and with two years of control, if if I'm <laughs> if I'm going to make that deal, I want your best players. You know, you know who I. Th- so it starts with Torres or Sanchez, mm-hmm. or Judge. You know. Uh- yeah, which, would never, which would never happen. It, it, which would never happen, exactly. You guys hear so, me? first of all, the Nationals aren't trading Scherzer. It's, it's not happening. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sophie, I don't know what, why. You guys hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, cool. I, I had, I don't know, I, I was getting like major feedback. All right. No, if, if the if the Nats and the, and the Yankees were going to, if they're going to tar- start trade talks, I agree with you. Torres can be a starting point, Sanchez, but I think LeMahieu even should be a talking point because you you know the whole Brian Dozier thing in in Washington does not work. They need they need someone at second base, and if you've got Didi coming back, you got Didi coming back. You're gonna put Torres back at second. So, the, and even with how. Um, Yourself has been playing this year. 
you you've got an extra the Yankees have an extra spot and again there's nothing wrong with having extra outfielders extra infielders extra anything but if if you really want to spark talks with that I would say the Nationals could even say all right what about that LeMahieu guy who has been probably their most consistent hitter all season yeah I don't think they were I don't think the Yankees would do that though just like I, even with Didi coming back, and I, th- I think they're going to find a way to put him in there. So because he's just just because, like you said, he's been you know, the most consistent hitter on the team. But I, I don't, you can't just take someone like that away. Like, well, May will be the starting third baseman. Yeah, I honestly he's I better think, than Michella. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I would, I would, no. uh, I would, I think that Urshela might be in end up being in like in trade talks. So. I mean, you know, the thing is too with Urshela, he's this. This little run he's going on, it's great. But he's, but other than that, he really hasn't done much in his career. I mean, this this was his third team just this year. Um, mm-hmm. Last year he was in Toronto. He had a, he, he's he's bounced around a lot in this league. I think before this season he's he was hitting. He had a two two thirty two forty career average. So I don't know if this little spark he's had. Since since coming up is really going to help in trade talks. I think if you could, yeah, package him with a Frazier, package him uh, with with an Enduhar or or a Torres or something. They maybe, but I don't think you, you know, your shell alone is is someone that mm-hmm. that anybody could really, besides maybe, you know, like a, a, another team maybe needs a, a player off the bench or something like that. But I don't think you, you're going to, yeah. Even, your shell shouldn't even be in the conversation for someone like a Scherzer. Yeah, def- definitely not for Scherzer. No, no. no. Scherzer is like I said. Scherzer is going to start. It's going to start with Sanchez or Torres. Mm-hmm. It's going to start with a franchise type player like that. And, and the thing is, too, the, the yeah, Washington, I have to. Washington's having I an have off to. year, but there is so much talent on that team with the starting pitching, and then you've got Randon, you've got Turner, you've got Soto. You've got the pieces there. Just because the Washington's having one bad year, I'm not going to get rid of not just the ace of my pitching staff, but one of the best pitchers in the league. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's who's already signed for the next two exactly. years? Exactly. Like, yeah. so you're getting two more years of control. Mm-hmm. Granted, you have to pay this contract till 2028 mm-hmm. because it deferred the money. Mm-hmm. But still, you're getting the best pitcher. In basically the best pitcher in the major, the most consistent top three pitcher. And that's the thing too. In the major leagues you, for the past ten you years. You take any of the top pitchers over the last few years. You, who else? What? Clayton Kershaw. He's had his downs. Verlander, who you know, people wrote him off a few years yeah. ago in Detroit, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, in in Houston, he's had this resurgence. And Scherzer's been the only pitcher I could that comes to mind. That has been, oh, he's been consistent year in, year out. I mean, every pitcher has, you know, a couple bad starts here and there. But it's there's no real long stretch of bad outings. No, it's, he, it's Scherzer and Kershaw. Yeah. Uh, the two best mm-hmm. pitchers in the world. But, but Kershaw's no been doubt. hurt, too. Yeah. Forget, Kershaw's yeah, but been Ker- hurt. You know, the funny bad thing with problems. Kershaw, you know, the funny thing with Kershaw is last year, everyone was like, well, Kershaw was hurt. He didn't pitch that well. He had a 2.73 ERA last year. It was his worst ERA since 2012. (laughs) Dude, 80% of Kershaw, 80% of Kershaw is better than 99% of his starters in the league. Like, he's that good. I mean, and so is Scherzer. I mean, Scherzer, you know, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8 ERA. He'll give you 250 to 300 strikeouts, mm-hmm. throw 200 innings. You don't find that anymore. No, not especially. You know he, he's he's a beast. No, he's a, he's a beast. I mean, he saves you bullpen mm-hmm. for that one day. And we know how historically but, terrible the Washington <laughs> the Washington bullpen is the worst bullpen since 1920. Second worst bullpen since 1920. I, oh, they're hard. They just can't get it fixed. It's a se- I don't. I don't know ERA what right now. Seven. I don't know what it is with them. Yeah. The, the bullpen just stinks mm-hmm. all the time, always. Like I don't, I don't even get it. 
but they've traded for guys. They brought in Doolittle. They brought in like like I don't even. It's like anyone that goes there just is horrible. I don't I don't get it, but it's a shame too because their starting staff is good. They, they have the a, top three is a great rotation. You know, the top three is as good as anyone in the league. Yeah, you know, they and they have the great young hitting stars. I mean, this team is yeah. the team has a great foundation, a great infrastructure. I again, it's just the bullpen has been that has been that one thing, and I think that's the reason why they're they're ju- you know they're they're not going to compete this year. It's it's. No, I still think they. I still think they're going to turn it around. I don't know. Maybe I have hope. Maybe it's blind hope for me because I picked them in the beginning of the year, so I have to go with it. But hey, don't worry. I you know, I don't know. I don't know. Going for me. Yeah. Oh, dude, the Mets just do Mets yeah. things. I, like, I, I, I don't even get it with them. Yeah. I, I, I thought maybe this was the year. It is. No. No. Nah, I, I had a pick go. for a wild card. And that's the thing too with the NL. Yeah, you could. Uh, Anybody, it, it could be can win that NL wild card. I think anybody can right now at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, with all these the National League, it's just you can say you know, this is like we said. Like, I think you said Supi at the beginning of the season with that you know that first episode. Like every, almost every single team that in that league is has a chance to make you know make a wild card like the. You know, like this, there's only like three or four teams that are definitely out of it. I yeah, you know, I like, said the, every like the Marlins is, and I did think the like Reds the, were going to yeah. be better this year, and that was completely wrong too. No, it, yeah. Let's just talk about how wrong I was. Come on, <laughs> this, yeah, I was terrible. Oh, the Reds were bad. I really, I mean, really thought are... Sonny Gray would I... turn it around. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys believe in Sonny Gray? I never understood the belief in Sonny Gray. I don't know. I, I never I, got it. Matt Kemp. I, I thought it was going to be Sonny Gray, Matt Kemp, and Yasiel you know. Puig. Just that the, the one shining thing is I I do love watching Castillo pitch. I he, uh, he is he is mm-hmm. he's something special. He's something special, and it's unfortunate that, that? Uh, Luis Castillo. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. unfortunate that he's a he's the one piece of like bacon in a turd sandwich basically he's like the <laughs> little he's like a little bacon bit in a turd sandwich yeah oh, I can't see him. he's he's definitely one of the front runners for Cy Young right now so yeah I mean like I guess that was gonna be our next topic too is just you know talking about some of these front runners for the you know, major awards like Cy Young, MVP, Rookie of the Year. You know, you got, as I said, got Castillo in there for National League Cy Young. And, you know, obviously Scherzer is, it will be in there, uh, you know, and then you go to the, the MVP, the Bellinger, Yelich, even the Pete Alonso has the potential for Rookie of the Year and, that, mm-hmm. and the MVP. So those Pete Alonso is going ridiculous, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that guy, that kid. Nineteen home runs, nineteen home runs, nine forty OPS. Dude, yeah, the dude just like mm-hmm. he's breaking, like he's killing it internationally. He's definitely got rookie of the year. I mean, yeah. I would think it internationally. The only right. chance anyone else has is possibly Brian Anderson. Yeah, like his name right from Pittsburgh. Like, but Alonzo's such a lead on everybody, I think, in rookie of the year. You know, and then in the American League, it's Brandon Lowe. I mean, to, to me, anyway, he's got 11 home runs to 855 OPS. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone else is touching him. As long as he gets, he can, continues to get some playing time with Tampa Bay. Yeah. I think he's good for rookie of the year in the IL. For sure. I just don't see any pitchers making any moves or, you know, Mm -hmm. it depends on if some of these young pitchers come up, like, within the next week or so. Like, Mm -hmm. they're talking about, like, Dylan Cease, uh, Chicago White Sox and stuff like that. Because some of these pitchers come up and really make a mark. 
yeah. then I can see it. But what Pete Alonso is doing right now, I mean, he could his twentieth home run next tomorrow. Yeah, like I mean, it, it, that's crazy, dude. You know, American League's a little murkier as far as that goes. Yeah, you know, because Brandon Lowe has been good, but it's been a little, it's been a little, little tighter there. But other than that, I don't know. What do you got, Soupy? I'm still going with my Brendan Rodgers pick for NL Rookie of the Year. He's, mm. oh, he's, yeah. I mean, he, he's he has an okay start, two sixty eight, seven RBIs, in in, in in thirteen games. It's not bad. It's not. But the, you know, my problem is Peter Alonso has just been sky skyrocketed so quick. He just blew up. So I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, my and then. I'll go with who I think is actually going to get the AL MVP only because he he's just, he he's right now has the combination of everything and he's hitting better than he ever has. I think Joey Gallo, even though he is hurt right now, he's just, I love watching Joey Gallo right now. And I think he's going to, if he could kind of keep the average to where it is. Cause I mean, last year he hit what? Like I think two Oh nine. If I'm trying to remember, uh, two like two hundred six, two hundred nine, or something like that last year, and now he's oh, at yeah. two seventy six. And again, two straight season with forty home runs. If he could do a two, if he could finish with in the two seventies, still hit forty home runs, hundred and twenty RBIs, maybe that's an MVP for me. And again, yeah, right. Texas is better than what I re- than they had. They're playing better than than who they are. But I think if they stay in the wild card hunt, I'll put Joey Gallo in there. Um, and then right now, I think the leader in the Cy Young race, it's it. Th- this one's kind of a little because you could say Odorizzi, um, you, or I mean Verlander's pitching well too. And then Domingo Herman. Domingo Herman has been my favorite pitcher to watch all year. Unfortunately, he's had two kind of rough starts the last couple of games. I think he's 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 right now he's that young pitcher who has been getting who's been getting outs and getting effective starts just based on his stuff. But I think now mm-hmm. that there's tape on him, players are starting to learn him, so he's getting hit a little bit. If he makes those adjustments, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna pitch very effectively. I think he's gonna have. He's had two rough starts. I think he's gonna have a few more, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think if the second half he makes the adjustments, I think he'll be in the race. Um, yeah. And then I think I think right now Bellinger, you can't really go against Bellinger uh, for NL MVP. The, you know, again, Yelich could could make a could make a run, but I think Bellinger is just hitting out of his out of, out of his mind right now, and I think he's just jumps at such a quick start. It's going to take a lot of other players just a an absolute Ruthian type of second half to even get near him for that MVP, and then NL Cy Young. Ryu's probably the best guy right now. Eight and one, one point four eight ERA. So the whip of point of point eight. So I think right now that's that's kind of your clear clear cut um, as of right now. Your NL Cy Young guy. So again, it's all it's it's June. We're yeah. right now. We're June third, and you know, like again, last year at this point, everyone was like, "Oh, Luis Severino." There's your AL Cy Young guy. Mm-hmm. There he is. There it is. And then he just had that, uh, you know, the last start, the last start before his, the the All Star break was terrible. And everyone's like, all right, he probably just needs a little break and need a little time to regroup. And then he just had that terrible July and August. And then he kind of found it towards the end of the year. But again. It, so that's why you know right right now those those seems like the leaders, but again it's it's June. Yeah, I mean for for me the you know the AL Cy Young my pick in the 
you know, the preseason predictions was uh, Verlander, and I, right now I'm going to stick with that. I'm gonna, he's been pitching, he's been pitching really well, really mm-hmm. well uh, this season. So I just I, the third of the way through the season, I'm going to stick with that for AL Cy Young, and then you know, at, uh, MVP for the American League. It's you know, it's kind of tough right now, like to see. There's not really a clear cut. Uh, leader in that right now but you know obviously there's guys in there that like I, I went with uh, Aaron Judge at the beginning obviously he's not he's hurt right now you know you said you mentioned Joey Gallo mm-hmm. I think you will I think he will be in that in that race you know obviously he has, he has to keep it up he has to keep hitting for a pretty pretty high average like 270 260 so I think he, he'll be in the race if he does that but mm-hmm. you know other guys other guys that could be, uh, definitely be in there is uh, George Springer. He's been having a phenomenal year, probably uh, one of the one of his best seasons so far in his career. Yeah. And then another Astro, uh, Bregman. He's he'll probably be, end up being in like the top, at least the top five for MVP. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, there's not really any other any guys that stand out too much for the American League. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, well, as you get into like the the middle months here, months here, you know, guys start uh, you know playing. Well, this, where they're supposed to, and then you got you kind of have, see guys that stick out more. Yeah, so it's we'll it, it's always that lull of July and uh, you know late from late June to like mid August is that. You're not really paying attention to anybody, so somebody can kind of sneak have a good f- few weeks and kind of put themselves in that position. You won't even realize until September it goes, Oh, this guy's actually good. Nah, maybe, maybe he'll be the uh, MVP or the Cy Young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like with the American league Cy Young too, like you said, with Herman, he'll hopefully he doesn't end up being like Sever like Severino last year. Cause mm-hmm. I'm hoping he can, you know, be consistent, but then, Oh, the other question is too, though, is what he has. Pretty sure he has like a pitch. He has a pitch limit for the Yankees this year. So if he, even if he can end up, you know, having some more quality starts, he, he might. He probably, he's probably not going to end up pitching all the way through the season either. Mm-hmm. So he's. It'll be tough for him to be in that Cy Young race when he when he has that pitch limit. So I don't know. Oh, I didn't even know he had a pitch limit this year. Yeah. I, okay. I'm pretty sure they said that. I don't know. I don't know the exact number, but I know he, you know, he has one for sure. Okay. Yeah. So either, you know, especially like when Seb comes back and, and all that. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, you, you'll have six, you'll have essentially six guys. Yeah. So either skip starts or he, or, you know, I would say Herman could be more of a, a, you know, he could be a three or four inning guy or. Yeah. So. I mean, they don't forget too that uh, Montgomery is supposed to come back probably mid July, August from Tommy John. Is is so is that a fish? Cause I know like he's had some setbacks and. Mm-hmm. I know I know he got pushed he got pushed to the 60 day and to make some room for some from other people yeah. I don't know but yeah okay so yeah you're going to have you know you'll have Severino you'll have Montgomery there's I think Montgomery they might move I think more or less he may either get moved to the bullpen or they might just put him in Scranton and just kind of be like, hey, we'll probably use you in September. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like that's the best thing to do is like ease them into it. Like, yeah, and, and they don't want to rush, rush anything. Yeah, they're not hurting right now for a, a, a starting pitcher, and they're very lucky yeah. with that too. So this, you know, for the most part, you know, CC being hurt a couple of times, and Severino and. They've been very lucky enough to have the guys who come in 
pitch effectively and kind of fill those roles. So, and even with like, yeah. you know, um, even with Sessa, Sessa's pitched, he's pitched well uh, mm-hmm. w- when he's been coming in. So, who knows? And especially could help, you know, come late September when they can, they can rest guys. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and another another thing on like the injuries for the Yankees, uh, uh, DD is DD Rigoris is coming back. He's supposed to be coming back this weekend, just uh, on Friday, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's coming back, and then again, like there's rumors of Judge Judge might uh, start playing. Uh, Stanton, they're they're evaluating Stanton right now. Stanton, Judge, and Bird could all start. Uh, playing this coming week, and mm-hmm. the Double A Trenton Thunder are coming to Hartford uh, mm-hmm. for a for a three game series this week. Fingers crossed, I might be watching. You know, maybe one of these guys play. So yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I'm I was, excited for that possibility. Yeah, I uh, Gregorius just he was at in Scranton. Mm-hmm. Like this past week, and I was like, I was so mad because I was on vacation, so I couldn't even, I couldn't even go see him. Yeah. Like I, I go to so many of those games, and then I, I wasn't even there for that for the whole week. I like, I love how when, when you get that chance, and I, and and anybody, if you ever have that opportunity, I watched, I've watched Clemens pitch rehab starts. I've watched Doc Gooden pitch rehab starts. Mm-hmm. When I was a lot. When this is when I was a young kid. Um, this yeah. year I watched Chris Iannetta. Uh, for for Colorado, he I watched him play a couple of rehab games. Uh, Trevor Rosenthal came in. His the the double league affiliate of the Nationals came in. Rosenthal uh, came in and pitched. I watched him pitch. He was. I I definitely saw why that guy has had forty save seasons. The guy he ninety eight mile mm-hmm. an hour fastball with movement, and then his eighty eight mile an hour slider was disgusting. It was, it was absolutely insane to watch, especially because, you yeah. know, I, I, I watched double-A <laughs> pitching all year. So it's like, it's okay. They're good. But mm-hmm. to watch like a major league pitcher pitch was like, wow. Yeah. I just, with me, I've I've seen a lot, a bunch of guys, I guess. Uh, I mean, I saw Jeter in Scranton. I've seen A-Rod. Um, well, Granderson a couple years mm-hmm. ago. And then uh, to share, I well, actually got to share his autograph when he was here, when he was in Scranton. So, mm-hmm. and, and then, well, I think well, it wasn't one for a rehab, but Clemens was there for like some kind of, you know, former player day or something like that. But he was he he threw out like the first pitch or something. I think I watch. I remember the Bridgeport Bluefish. It was an independent league team, and they used to do all these crazy uh, promotions. So. Mm-hmm. Pete Rose was a manager one game. Uh, Roger Clemens was a manager one game. Um, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, former NWO, were ma- were managers of a game. Uh, Rick Flair has done it. Huh. They used to do that. So, like, anytime they used to do, like, these crazy promotions like that, I used to always go to them, and they're so much fun to watch. I watched mm-hmm. – uh, uh, they, they, Kevin Nash put some like put the mascot through a table. It was awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, anytime, yeah, anytime you have an opportunity, if a professional player, even if it's like an aging player that maybe mm-hmm. is trying to make some glimpse of a comeback, if you've got an opportunity to watch that in a, in a, in a small, intimate setting like a minor league ballpark. You go take it, take advantage of that. It's just nice. It's just, it's kind of like, and I, and I, I assume a lot of people listening ha- have gone to major league games and I would hope they've gone to minor league games too. Cause it's, that's the future of baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the intimate setting of a minor league park, you know, there's, there's never a bad seat at a minor league park and just be able to no. get close enough to watch that stuff is it's always fun to watch. It's always enjoyable. Like, again, I work for the Hartford Goats, double-A affiliates of the the Rockies. 
And the big reason why I love this job, like I love working for them is obviously I love watching baseball. Baseball is a big passion of mine, but again, every day on a daily basis, I'm watching the future of major league baseball in a close intimate setting. And you're, and I'm getting to know these players and it's going to be cool in a few years when, you know, you see these guys in the big club and you're like, Oh yeah. I remember watch, watching him play when he was in his late teens, early twenties. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like with the, with the rail riders, it's awesome to see over the last few years, I've gone to a bunch of games you know, I've seen Judge come up, like coming up. I've seen Torres, mm-hmm. Sanchez, Severino. I've, like I've seen all those guys. It's awesome to see them like playing now. When I saw them just a few years ago in like a small setting like that, like, mm-hmm. like you said, it is. Yeah, it's. And again, I'm watching some guys now. You know, in, in before the before um the before this team was the Rockets affiliate. It was a Twins affiliate. So mm. this was when they were the New Britain Rockets. I watched Joe Maurer come up through the ranks. Mm. So nice. watching a guy like Joe Maurer, not, you know, you, you, you hear that, oh, this guy's the next star. He's, he's, but you did, but he's a, you know, borderline Hall of Famer, one of the best twins to play in that franchise. Hometown guy too, born and raised in in Minnesota, so. But like getting you know, and I and I look back on it now, like wow, I got to watch that guy develop as a player and to what he turned out to be. It was is 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 awesome to watch. My my hitter of the month, uh, Pirates Josh Bell, uh, twelve home runs, thirty one RBIs, three seventy five average. Uh, again, he had that amazing three home run game. Uh, I think it was at the beginning of the month. It was all the way at the beginning of the month, but he played, you know, he had a, but still keep up 375 average, which was second just behind old Nolan Arenado. The 12 home runs led all of major league baseball in home runs for, for this past month. So Josh Bell is my hitter of the month. And for pitcher of the month, I will go with uh, Ryu, uh, 1.48 ERA, Lee, uh, which led all of Major League Baseball. Complete game shutout under his belt. Only 12 earned runs in 73 innings, complete with 69 strikeouts, five walks. So that, that's my uh, pitcher of the month. All right, so my my hitter of the month is going to be uh, Austin Meadows of the Rays. He had a you know a really good month. He's been great this year. He had he hit three fifty seven, hit twelve bombs, drove in thirty seven runs, stole seven bases. Uh, uh, his OPS was one point one point oh eight five, and you know. He's been like really a key piece for the Rays this year, and Pirates are looking even more dumb for that trade. You know, with him and uh, Glass now playing big and really good for the Rays this year. Yeah. So I don't know what the Pirates are thinking with that trade, but yeah. Anyway, with the uh, my pitcher of the week, I mean not week month, pitcher of the month is going to be. I'm actually going to go with a. Reliever, I'm gonna go with uh, Kirby Yates of the Padres. Mm-hmm. He got 20, 21 of twenty-one saves in the in the month of May. Oh, not in the month of May, but for the season so far. And he's obviously May is included in that, and he's just been, you know, pitching out of his mind this year. I don't know if he's definitely not going to maintain, you know, the same level. He's not going to. He won't end up breaking the saves record. He's not going to break. Uh, K Rod's uh, record of whatever whatever it is, 60, 60, 60 I think it's like five? sixty. Uh, I was gonna say sixty two. I think it might be sixty two. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, he, I don't think he'll do that. But he'll, I think he'll end up being you know still solid throughout the year. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've watched him pitch. He's got some lights out stuff. And again, 21 of 21, that's, that's an impressive, impressive streak to start on. And I think it's one of the big reasons, too, why the Padres are playing well. And and I think they could. I think they have the opportunity of I think a lot of other teams to sneak into that wild card too. So, mm-hmm. but another young team, and again with him, and just I, I I'm excited to watch those Padres. I really am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean with the Yates, he was in he was with the Yankees, and you know he didn't yeah. do anything when he was pitching with them, and all of a sudden he you know he went over to the he signed with the Padres, and it kind of just. Like last year, he was he pitched okay with them. He didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't think he pitched in many save situations. So he had like he didn't have too many saves. But then all of a sudden this year, he's just just pretty much his breakout year. He's all of a sudden coming out of nowhere and being like phenomenal. And I, well, <clears throat> we've been doing those uh, deep dive articles, so I think I yeah. might be doing one on him soon. But yeah. Since uh, since our draft. Our draft articles I've done with. I'll I'll do one on him. I'll do a deep dive on him. Yeah, probably within within a week or two. Mm-hmm. So that would be something to look forward to. And um, I, well, we'll we might as well do some promotion for our articles coming up since you're if you do a deep dive. Um, tomorrow, special episode uh, on the Too Much Potar, or today. Again, we're recording this on a Monday night, so it might be on a Tuesday. It will be Tuesday morning. I interviewed the president of Space Foam Pillows, uh, Sam Broder. And the significance of this product is it has got a huge buzz in the baseball community, especially in the minor leagues, uh, including who someone we, we talked about on the show a couple times today. Pete Alonzo is one of their... Not even – I'm not even going to say they're endorsers because they don't pay any of these players to use their products. It all happened organically. And, I, and, and on this interview, he gives us a backstory of the product in itself and the backstory of how this product grew within the baseball community in itself. So that will be out today um, on, on the, and as an extra episode on the podcast. And I'll have a write-up for it on – the score crow reps website. So check that out. And also this week I will be starting my worst contracts for every team. This week will be the American league East and week by week, I'll be doing every division till I get to every team. So. Yeah. That's some, some interesting stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we've been really pumping in some good content for the score crow. Mm -hmm lately we you know we're, we're getting better and better and we are expanding and definitely especially with this podcast we interview you know you interviewed rachel luba a couple weeks ago which i thought was an incredible interview she's a very very interesting person to to listen mm-hmm. to and again tomorrow or today uh the interview with sam broder from space foam and just letting everybody know we are going to keep pumping out extra episodes like this. Every every once in a while, we'll have an extra episode besides our weekly episode. And we want to dive into baseball on every level and give you guys uh, great content. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, and as, as we get closer to, like, you know, uh, the trade deadline, we can have start having – start discussing – you know, who's going to be buyers and sellers. And then, you know, you can have, we'll probably start having some, you know, kind of bonus episodes that it leads up to it. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, and we got, we got the all-star, all-star break mm-hmm. coming up in the next, uh, all-star breaks in a few weeks. Voting's yeah. out now. So it's, 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 we're there now. We are, uh, basketball ends, uh, the, end of this week or beginning of next week, depending, you know, if, by, by next week, it's baseball, baseball, baseball. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. Yeah. And I think with, uh, with the all-star game, we should, I think we should even do like a, 
like a maybe even a live episode for like when the when the All Star selections come out or something like that. I'm down for that. Don't forget too, it's the All Star selection is a little different this year. There's two rounds, mm-hmm. so we have our initial vote now, and then the top three at every position. The votes reset, and then now you vote within those top three of every position you vote the starter in so that's something they're new they're trying this year so there's two rounds of voting so let's see how it works i i kind of like the idea well i don't know if necessarily it's gonna bs be too we'll see i don't know i don't know if i i don't know if i'm gonna vote twice yeah. Like it, I, I'm, I know me. I forget. To, I forget to. I, I'm the person that walks in the room, forgot why I came in. Mm-hmm. So I, I probably forget to vote again. I yeah. already know it. I already voted once, and then that's good for me for now. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's. Uh, I understand the idea, but it's just I don't know. It's kind of. I feel like it's unnecessary. Like it's, if you have an original vote and you know people vote for who they want in anyway it's like i don't know it's kind of weird i i like how the nba does it um a percentage is the fans a percentage is the coaches and a percentage is the players and they combine all that and that's how Mm -hmm. they get your starting lineup and, and your reserves and everything i know the nba is a little different because the nba i think there's you know they're only picking like I think 12 or 13 players. Baseball is a little different. The one thing I got to say about baseball that I completely disagree with, uh, and they need, I think it need, that needs to end, is every one player from every team is represented. Yeah. I hate that. If you're, no one on your team is good enough, then they don't deserve to be there. I don't think, I, and, and, I, and I don't like the fact that they take away an all star spot of someone who might deserve it just because we got to get somebody from the Florida Marlins on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, who. Yeah, who even would I, make it? <laughs> I, I have no clue. I, I think the only – I'm thinking of, like, the really bad teams. I don't know if anybody – I can't think of anybody on the Giants. Um, And I would say from the Reds, I would put the uh, same thing, Luis Castillo in there. And I mm-hmm. think he could even be a starter. He could yeah, possibly uh, be the uh, All Star Game starter. I think he's got he's got a good chance. He's yeah, pitching he really well this year. So, but I think that need that rule needs to go out. But I do like I like the let the players vote, mm-hmm. let some of the coaches vote. But yeah, same thing. Let the fans vote. I, I like I think that's that would be the next step. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just uh, with Rob Menford though, I just don't know. I, he just seems like he knows what the hell he's doing. Like he's just yeah. like he doesn't know. He doesn't even have a Twitter. Like he he's not even like all of his fans have Twitter, and he doesn't even like have, he doesn't have one to be he, like. He's not like at their I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, like he's. I, I'll, he, I'll he's say not, in old guy terms, he's not hip. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's close I, enough. Yeah, and especially with this game is, and th- this game is kind of falling by the wayside for a lot of reasons, and I think th- this that's kind of a perfect example. I think I want my commissioner to have a Twitter. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. care if he's sitting. Uh, I don't care if he's sitting on his couch with his phone in my in his hand tweeting it. Do you know how many people how, people's Twitters they don't actually tweet their own Twitter? It's they always have people handling it for them. Yeah. Hire somebody to use your Twitter. You are the commissioner of Major League Baseball. Pretty sure you can get a social media guy mm-hmm. to do your Twitter for you to 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 make statements for you to do things like that. Uh, and again. And I think that's kind of the the trend of how the game is right now because we're getting on players who are showing personality by th- you know bat flipping and 
it celebrating and things like that. When we see it in the NBA all the time, guy makes a big three, they're, they're handshaking, they're clapping, they're getting excited. In football, they, they and this was the smartest thing football did was bring back the end zone celebrations. It's, it's, it's part of the game. Let it happen. And I think, and I know a lot of old people are saying, well, that's not, that's not the way I used to play the game. That's not how the game used to be. Guess what? Back in the day, people of different colors were not allowed to play together. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, people didn't wear helmets. Back in the day, people didn't wear pads and, 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 you know, they chewed tobacco, but that doesn't happen anymore. No. We're the, our, we're evolving as people. We're evolving as a society. This, the game of baseball needs to evolve with it. We need to show personalities. The best players in the game, you can't, who's the best player in the game right now? Figuratively is Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. I guarantee, even in Los Angeles, in Anaheim, just outside of Angel Stadium, if Mike Trout stood there with a poster that said, hi, my name is Mike Trout, I'd have no idea who it is. Because he's not as eccentric as a LeBron James yeah. or, a, you know, even like Kevin Durant or Steph Curry or in football, you know, to- everybody knows who Tom Brady is mm-hmm. or everybody knows who Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown are. Baseball needs that. Yeah. I mean, like, mm-hmm. we've talked about on the show before, with, you know, how Major League Baseball has a marketing problem. And, like, example would be, like, with the draft, like, the dra- different drafts. Like, NFL, if I ask you who the number one pick is, you, you your answer would be Kyler Murray. If I ask you, mm-hmm. who, like, NBA draft, who's going to be picked number one, Zion. But then if you look at the MLB, like – the casual, even just the casual fan, is if you ask them who's who was picked number one in the in the draft this year that started, you know, this tonight, well, last night. So this episode's mm-hmm. coming out on on uh, Tuesday, but mm-hmm. but if well, if you uh, if you ask anybody, it would be like who who the hell is Adley Rushman? If they if you ask like just a casual fan, it would be like who the hell is that? If Adley Rushman walked into the, my house right now and said, hi, I'm Adley Rushman, I'm like, who the hell are you? Why are you in my house? I'm calling the cops. Yeah. But the only argument I would make with that is the MLB has the development system, obviously. They have this, mm-hmm. the minor league farm system. So I don't know in 20 on you know June, I guess today's June 4th. I, I don't even know what date it is anymore. June 4th. Right. June 4, 2019. I don't know how any of these players drafts they are going to do until at best 2022, 2023. That's, that's the, I think one of the problems is one of the things that with MLB compared to have, you know, Zion Williamson is playing uh, the, the last week in October mm-hmm. in, in a Pelican uniform or whatever uniform he's wearing. Kyler Murray week one in September is under center for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And I think that's the difference with MLB. Yes. I do think MLB should maybe try to do uh, not necessarily the younger guys, but these guys that are up now, instead of, instead of, uh, instead of everyone trashing Tim Anderson for throwing a bat and getting excited, just put his personality out there. Don't make him a villain, make him a hero. You know this White Sox team is young. Right now, they're they're you know they're not going to do much this year. But in a few years, these younger guys are going to come up and they're going to be a good team. Let's know who Tim Anderson is now. So when if the White Sox are competing for an AL Central, we'll know who that is. We'll know who these White Sox players are rather than like, oh, who's good this year? Oh, the White Sox. Hmm, who they got? Mm-hmm. Tim yeah. Anderson. Oh wait, that guy who like. Flip the bat once. Yeah, okay, I know who that is. Yeah. Rather than, yo, I've been watching Tim Anderson for a couple of years now. This guy's incredible. And now his team is good. I want to pay attention to that. And and one more thing. Major League Baseball complains about how there is no African-American 
uh, influence in the game, it's right there. It is mm. in your face. It's right there. Yeah. So he likes to throw a bat. So he loves to get excited. What's wrong with that? That's what the kids like now. Kids are doing dances. Every, kids floss every chance they get. Mm-hmm. You know? Just let the kids celebrate. Let them get excited about something. Let them get excited about the game of baseball. You can obviously tell it's tw- <laughs> I'm getting tired. It's been a long couple of days. When you yeah. find me something to rant on, I rant on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I I agree with everything you said. Yeah, it's, uh, they definitely like. You, why do you get mad at somebody that's passionate about the game? I like, and, and I speak I of that because I am passionate this game. Yeah. I love this game more than I have. I played this game when I was five years old, and I played it up until. I sucked trying to play in college. Yeah. So I still love this game no matter what. And that's why I don't want it. To, I want my kids in in decade, a decade or whatever from now. God, I don't even know. But I want my kids to like still love the game of baseball like I do. And I still want it to be as prominent in our society mm-hmm. as it is, as it was. I don't even know how it is now. Yeah. It's still a great, it still makes money. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the one thing I think the reason why Major League Baseball is like, eh, we're making money. Does it really matter? But, but I think it has a lot to do with older fans still being the ones spending the money. How are you going to get the younger fans, especially the younger fans, especially like we talk about now, how all millennials are broke. They don't yeah. spend a lot of money. They don't spend money on a lot of things. Because they don't have a lot of money, so if they don't if they don't grow up pl- loving the game of baseball, they're not going to bestow that upon their children, and then their children's not going to care to give it to their children. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're making money now, but what happens when the generation like uh, myself and us that grew up loving this game are no longer around? And you have a whole generation that really didn't care, that really didn't grow up going to baseball games for more or less. You know, they they're not going to care. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, if I, if and when I have kids, there's no doubt that my kids going to like baseball. I'm, I will too. I'm, I'm going to force them if they if he or she doesn't like it. I'm force. I'm going to force them. My my girlfriend now, who I plan on having a great future with, she mm-hmm. doesn't like baseball. But I already told her. I said, "Yeah, that baby is gonna sit with me, and we are watching Yankee games all day. We yeah. are gonna, I, we are gonna, I'm gonna sit that baby down for three hours, and is gonna stare at thirty something year old Aaron Judge, just like how I stared at Derek Jeter and mm-hmm. Posada and Pettit and all those guys." So. Yeah. I mean, for for me, I actually my I didn't even get it for my parents. Like I, well, my grandfather, my mom's my mom's dad was, you know, a huge Yankee fan, and I got it. That's where I got it from. But you know, my mom didn't really like really. She didn't really grow up like really liking them like he did. So mm-hmm. like he, her brothers did, but she didn't really as much. And then you know when I started loving it she i sat i sat there watching the games and she would actually sit there watching with me and then you know mm-hmm. kind of started to fall in love with them like that way so no, I, actually, I, I i definitely had like the influence on her to get into it yeah we were we were yeah. we were a sports household my parents one thing we always did we always watched the yankee game there's two things that my my parents my parents love all sports but the two three things that they always watched were yankee games and UConn men's and women's basketball, the, the, every single game that those that those teams played, it's on the TV in our house. So that's mm-hmm. how I grew up. And even longer on football Sundays, my parents, you know, wore uh, Giants, Jets, Patriots. That those would be on. Yeah. But like it was especially Yankees and UConn basketball. Yeah. For me, it's uh, it'll be Yankees and Penn State football. My like my whole family is like. Diehard Yankees and Penn State fans. I'm a Miami uh, Hurricanes fan, so I hate you. 
Oh, just, just not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not in the same division anymore, but you know, uh, or same conference anymore, but you know, mm-hmm. a little yeah. bit of a little bit of a rivalry there. I mean, that's kind of like with Penn State and Notre Dame. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. they used to be big rivals, but now they don't. It's not they don't really hate each other anymore like they used to because they they used to play all the time, but now they don't. Yeah. I mean, I could, I trust me, we could spend another three hours for me complaining about how much the NCAA changing conferences with money and all that just kind of mm-hmm. screwed it up. Like, again, yeah. I, I grew up in Connecticut. Big East basketball was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. So being a UConn fan like I was, or like I still am, big the Big East tournament to me was the premier time of March. I didn't care about March Madness as much, even though UConn did win a couple championships. But I loved watching the Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden. To me, that was like the marquee playoff uh, playoff uh, conference every yeah. year. It's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but yeah, we could definitely have another four hours worth of just. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about how much the NCAA, NCAA has to, you know, yeah. screwed up a lot of things. Yeah. But just like every other sport, though, it's a business and business is money. And again, yeah. to kind of revert it back, that's why Major League Baseball kind of needs to wake up and mm-hmm. and uh, embrace this, this new generation of player. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So I guess we should, uh, you know, start wrapping up here. But yeah, absolutely. You know, you know it's been a, it's, it's been a very insightful episode that we had. Yeah, we talked you know, a, lot a lot of great things, and mm-hmm. again, beginning of the, se- the season's just starting now, so we're gonna have, you know, again, we're gonna put out a lot of great content for this channel. And now that the thick of baseball ends, we know what's we know the teams, and we can really dive into those teams and those players. So. Yeah, so, you know, like I said before, I'm going to be doing, like, we've been doing these deep dive articles. We mm-hmm. had all those articles on, uh, you know, the draft prospects. Now that the draft is uh, started, it'll, you know, those are over with, but we're going to be, you know, doing, starting to dive into some more, some more great articles here as we get into the, deeper into the season. So uh, mm-hmm. that's what Major League's concerned the base, baseball, but then there's also other articles that'll be coming out with the other, you know, with football and you know basketball is ending. So I know we've still got some articles there to finish up with the uh, season reviews, you know, and then mm-hmm. hockey will be done. Hockey will be done too yep. by next by next week. So yep. there'll be some articles there, and then you know there's always great content, and then with the uh, NFL season coming up, there'll be some, there'll be a lot of great content there as well. Mm-hmm. With you know, with uh, o- I think OTA is coming up only in a probably what is it, a couple this months week? now. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, uh, voluntary. Yeah. Vo- uh, was it voluntary or mandatory? Some the, the NFL has like eight hundred camps you have to go to. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like who six weeks or something like, right now. Yeah. yeah, who the hell knows. I don't know, but yeah. So that's all the. There's gonna be definitely gonna be a lot of good content coming out here, and we've yep. been we've been really going after it lately. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for that, and stay tuned for more. You know, too much podcast episodes. We'll be back again next week for another episode, and you know, next week will be we're gonna go over the draft. We'll probably do a uh, MLB draft review. And then go over some of the best picks and stuff like that. And then some of the other things that we've seen during the week. But, yeah, join us next time for a brand new episode. And just to remind you, you can have too much podcast.